Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Automotive Tester Certification. As a part of this, we are still in our chapter four where we were talking about the different test types and considering into the test techniques as the 4.2, which is the next topic. And of course, as a part of this, we are looking into the third segment of this topic that is 4.2.3, that is fault injection testing. In this tutorial, let's understand first of all what exactly fault injection testing is all about. So fault injection testing uh, is a technique for improving the coverage of the test by introducing faults uh, to the test code paths. In particular, uh, those areas where generally our test cases does not travel or does not approach to. So basically it is like error handling or any such recovery scenarios which you might have created as a part of it or try and catch block which you generally use in case of any kind of uh, you know runtime issues which may happen. So you try to inject such faulty values to see that if the uh, error handling of the code path is working or not precisely because if that happens in the real time, whether our errorness logic is working there at that point of time to make sure that there is no impact on the application uh, during that interfaces. So that's what is all about the uh, fault ejection technique, which we generally make use of. And it's very, very important to test those values. We generally are not covered as a part of our test data when talking about testing an application. And thus it's equally important when it comes to automotive because it's more important that what if generally people go wrong with some kind of input values and we have to make sure that whether our recovery scenarios and the uh, uh, codes which are more of the error handling which are specifically written for error handling is working and in place or not. So generally these are for that and we definitely conduct as a part of dynamic test approaches. Now to test these technique, the tester can selectively insert defects into the system at the following point. So there are three different points which we generally consider to insert such points or insert the test data uh, abruptly in order to see that how exactly the system behaves. The three points are defects in external components. Here if the system or example has uh, to safely detect implausible values from sensors. Now, of course, this is another way to uh, detect such uh, inputs which you will be trying with and at the same time making sure that the system uh, does handle those invalid inputs. And implausible basically stands for uh, not seeming reasonable or pro probable values which generally people don't put. So improbable values. The probability is very low that people will try with such a data and you try to feed in because you never know out of 100 if one person tries that, then how exactly your system behaves. So you must be covering that. And definitely it is mainly about the failing scenarios to see that if the system will fail in the situations, but does the system survive? Defects in the interfaces, uh, for example, the function of the system must not be harmed by short circuit or lost messages at any point of time because this error handling code will definitely try to skip that particular area or try to handle that error and bring you back to a nominal or normal state. The third one is defects in the software, which is internal, of course, and if the system should detect and handle internal defects or not, if the system is able to do that or not, and we generally test at these three points. So in the classical fault injection method, the tester inserts a defect by manipulating the real component. It's just like, you know, trying to interfere with the component's behavior and see that how exactly the system uh, sends an outcome to you or what kind of behavior does the system has a change when we try to manipulate some of the input values. External defects where it is also related to the interface defects can be simulated by tester at runtime. And the fault injection usually takes place in hill test environment because hill consists of everything put together, the software and hardware, everything, and most closer to your real time test environment. Here a fault insertion unit will be made use of like a FIU, uh, which serves as a driver for physical defects. Among these defects rank in the particular short circuit and open circuit both the ways which you will be testing. The simulation of the software-based interfaces defect can often already be done in a SIL test environment, which is quite compatible. So if you remember again, uh, you know, at any point of time, do relate your things back that there are a few things which you can actually pre pwn and conduct in SIL, then you can go ahead and do that because not everything will be pushed just because the hill is a real-time environment and you push all your testing activities to that. 
book of course but there are criticalities which you must be measuring at certain point of time to see that there are a few things which can be conducted in SIL then please conduct them there and only push the limited things which cannot be done without a hill environment should be conducted during hill. Defects in the software can often only be inserted in the development environment for example via debugger or XCP the execution is therefore in practice often very time intensive. So of course th there are possibilities where uh, software can often be only be inserted during the development environment so that is like the developers will help you to insert those code injections and see that how exactly the uh, defect behaves or changes the behavior of the application or the product so if you also relate this to we also call this as like defect seeding concept where the defect is seeded by the developer in order to see that if these things can be detected by the test cases or not so similarly a lot of such approaches are there which you can generally conduct in order to see the abrupt behavior of the application or the system put together well that's all from this particular tutorial team we'll be getting back to you we are having another two topics to cover from the syllabus and this chapter and we will be done with the certification series put together so stay tuned for more and we will be getting back to you with another tutorial for that till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning